Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the game where we aim for the obscure and we ignore the obvious. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, my name's Henry, this is my mate Theo and we're from London. Couple number two. Hi, my name's Reg, this is my brother Eddie, he's from Chippenham and I'm from Bristol. Couple number three. Hi, my name is Uzi and this is my sister Zuchi, we're from Nigeria and living in Birmingham. And finally, couple number four. Hi, my name's Rachel, this is my partner Paddy, and we live in South West London. Thank you very much indeed. These are today's contestants. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. Wonderful to have you here. Uh, so that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. The only man ever to put in an insurance claim because the mud wrestling party he held at his house ruined the carpet. It's my pointless <laughs> friend, it's Richard. Oh, yeah. Afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Welcome back to Ridge and Eddie as well. Knocked out in round two last time. Joined the 200 Club yeah. in round two. But unfortunately, got through round one easily enough. And Rachel and Paddy, welcome back. Got through to the head-to-head -head last time. So uh, both going to be uh, tough to beat, I think, at this time. Uh, welcome to our two new pairs. Lovely to have you here as well. Round one, mm. subject dear to our heart today. Mm. Could it's be. nothing dodgy, don't worry. OK, fine. Oh, phew. Not one of those things dear to our yeah, hearts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now, Lewis and Adam went through to the final last time, failed to win the jackpot, so we're adding another £1,000 to it, so today's jackpot starts off at £5,500. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play points. <laughs> Remember, as always, the pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be eliminated, so you just have to keep your scores low. Very, very best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this afternoon is... TV presenters. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, OK, can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... TV quiz and game show hosts. What about that? Yeah, we're going to show you now the names of five uh, UK TV quiz or game shows. We need you to tell us the name of anyone who's been a regular presenter of any of these during their TV transmission history, please. So no one-off specials or anything like that. So anyone who's been a regular presenter of any of these TV series, best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. So as Richard just mentioned, we're going to put five TV shows on the board and here they are. They'll be staying for the whole round. We won't be changing them halfway through. Here they come. We've got blockbusters, catchphrase, Mastermind, Sale of the Century, and The Golden Shot. We just want the name of anybody who has ever been a presenter of one of these. So, Henry, welcome to Pointless. Tell us all about yourself, Henry. Hi, so I'm Henry. I am currently a maths tutor who's at the moment applying to do a PhD starting next year. OK, do you know where you want to go? Uh, I'd ideally like to stay in London, so I think Imperial College is my sort of number one spot. OK, I'm doing maths. Doing maths, yeah. Doing maths. But in the meantime, a yeah. little bit of tutoring. Yeah. That's quite fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's very... You know, freelance can sort of be my own boss for a year, yeah. But best of all, you see the progress. You see well, exactly. the you know, bit of one-on-one -on -one tutoring. There's a real sense, yeah, like a rewarding sense to it, yeah. Very good indeed. Now, Henry. Henry, look at these game shows. Can you think of a presenter of one of these? Nice. I've got a couple obvious ones, but I'm sort of mm. racking my brain for two of them. But uh, no, I think I'm going to have to play it safe on the first one and go mastermind and say John Humphreys. John Humphreys, says Henry. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said John Humphreys. John Humphreys is right. It's not bad. Look at that. Down goes to 25. Gets off to a great start, Henry. 25 for John Humphreys. Yeah, hosted it uh, from 2003 onwards, John Humphreys. They film that in Belfast now. It's interesting because the sets of these things, obviously, whichever studio they're in, you, you have no idea. Most people would be amazed to know that we are actually in Dubai at the moment. Yeah, it's extraordinary, <laughs> isn't it? You know. And listen, we're really happy. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, we love it here. Yeah. It's lovely. You can't see here, but this it's an open air studio. <laughs> Very nice. It's beautiful. We see the, yeah. uh, the sparkling blue sky up there. Yeah. Yeah, we're heading to the water park straight after yeah. this. Oh, it'll be fun. Yeah, we love it here. Yeah, thank yeah, you very much. So, uh, yeah, Mastermind Belfast, so... Thank you very much. It's just indeed. as nice. Yeah, just as nice. Uh, now, Reg. Alexander. Welcome back. Thank Remind you. us all about yourself, Reg. Uh, I'm an independent card and gift agent. I sell uh, greetings cards and gifts to the independent sector through the South West, Devon and Cornwall, West Wales. That means, presumably, you just have to audition these cards yourself. Pretty much, Do people yeah. send you stuff through the post all the time, saying, what do you think of this? Yeah. I mean, do you commission them? No. no, 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 no. It's, I work with independent designers, so they design it, and I have to decide if I can work with them or not. That's, I've got a portfolio of about eight companies I work with. 
What's the most niche event that a card celebrates that oh, you, that you, that you sell? Oh, driving test these days. A lot of people Oh, no, do that's that. not too niche, is it? I guess. Oh, no, yeah. didn't, you didn't Congratulations, used to do that. good luck with your driving test. Yeah, um, yeah Easter is bigger than it used to be. I guess. Oh, yeah, I don't know about sending an Easter card. An Easter card, really, I mean, exactly. Look, I don't want to do you out of business. Oh, I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah I, I don't doubt that. Uh, now, um, what are you going to go for, Reg? I'm going to go for the golden shot. I'm going to say Norman Vaughan. Norman Vaughan, says Reg. Let's see, how many of our 100 people said Norman Vaughan? That is right. It has the air of being a low scorer, Norman Vaughan, I'll be honest. And it indeed is. Down it goes to two. Very well done indeed, Reg. Two for Norman Vaughan. Yeah, Northern Comic, host of the show in 1972, 1973. Uh, he invented uh, Bullseye as well, Norman Vaughan. Norman Vaughan could be two people, couldn't it, really? Norman Vaughan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> back. Anyway, thank you very much indeed. Now, Zucci, welcome to Pointless. Lovely thank to have you, you here. Uh, tell us all about yourself, Zucci. All right, so uh, I currently just finished my uh, Masters at Austin University. What, were you, um, what was your Masters in? It was in drug delivery. In drug delivery? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... So every time I say that, people are like... <laughs> Think, uh, wow, you can do a degree, a master's in that now. Yeah. <laughs> that's, just, that's just great. Yeah. What are you going to do with that? All right, so actually I'm trying to transition into research and development. Very so good. I'm actually going to start my PhD soon at uh, Salford University, just take it a step further. Very good indeed. Yeah. Well, good luck with that, Zuchi. Thank you. Um, what, or who, I should say, would you like to go for? So, truth is, I have no idea about what is going on over there. <laughs> 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 so I'm just going to take a wild guess and hope something comes of it. Let's just go with Catherine Anderson. C Catherine Anderson? Yeah. Oh, from the, from the glory days. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said Catherine Anderson. <laughs> That is surprising. That is surprising. <laughs> a big K.A. Oh, I'm sorry, that scores you 100 points, Zucci. Not, I uh... am ever so sorry, Zucci. What a horrible question to throw at you. Yeah, I'm afraid Catherine Anderson was uh, the original host of 321, so uh, <laughs> not, not one of these. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Rachel. Rachel, welcome back. Remind us all about yourself. So, I look after the PR for a couple of racing drivers, and I also do the media for a global car racing championship. I just, I can't think of a more glamorous thing to do. That must just be enormous fun. I mean, has motorsport always been something you've loved? Yeah, I've always enjoyed it. I used to watch Formula One when I was younger. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's a cool job. I get to travel, so that's a bonus. Can we say what? Oh, yeah, Can we? The, what world, is it? the World Endurance Championship. Nice. Nice. So, 24 hours of Le Mans and um, basically races that are longer than six hours. Wow. Um, they all seem longer than six hours, don't they? They do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Um, Rachel, well, that's fascinating. What are you going to go for on our board of hosts? Uh, so, I hope this is right. I'm going to go for Roy Castle. Roy Castle? For catchphrase. Let's see if Roy Castle is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Roy Castle. No. I'm afraid not Roy Castle. That scores you 100 points. Yeah, sorry, no Roy Castle up there. I'll give all the correct answers at the uh, end of the pass. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we're halfway through the round. Just before we come back down the line, let's just salute Reg for his fantastic low score there. Uh, commiserate with Rachel and Zucci with their high scores of 100. But uh, that'll all change in the next pass. Uh, will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, Paddy. Welcome back. Um, <laughs> remind us all about yourself, Paddy. Uh, so I live in London with Rachel. I work in financial services in the city. Um, and in my spare time, I like to play social sports. Um, but less so these days. So what are, what are so golf, you Go, mentioned? Golf, that's, golf, a, that's a social sport. Golf in the summer, hockey in the winter. OK, do you take your hockey quite seriously? I used to. I used to. Like, I've slowed down a little bit with work and other commitments. But, um, yeah, and I still play reasonably competitively. OK. As and when I'm allowed or I'm, I'm picked. Very good. Now, uh, Paddy, you're on 100. Remember, we're All looking right. for the name of anyone who is the main host of the standard versions of any one of these shows. This is uh, crunch time now. Yeah. We need a low score. Uh, yeah, I, I know a couple of couple of answers, so I'm going to play it reasonably safe and say Bob Holness. Bob Holness says Paddy. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Bob Holness. No red line for you. Your joint high scores. Bob Holness is right. Down it goes to 41. 141, your total. Yeah, the original presenter of, uh, of Blockbusters, Bob Holness. 
Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, now then, Uzi, welcome to Point Us. Thank Lovely you. to have you here. Uh, tell us all about yourself. OK, so I'm doing a PhD in Aston University in economics. Do you do any teaching while you're there as well? I'll start teaching this year, but okay. for now, no. Will that be fun, the teaching? Are you looking forward to it? Sort of. <laughs> It'll be good to get some teaching experience. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You might, you might suddenly find you love it. Maybe. You might remain in academia forever. Probably. <laughs> you never know. Uh, so, there you are. You're on 100. If you can score 40 or less, you're into the next round. Mm. OK. Um, so I'll just take a guess. I'll hope that sometime in his career, Graham Norton hosted one of these. Graham Norton. Just a guess. Graham Norton. Mm. There is your red line. Can you get below that with Graham Norton? Let's find out if it's right in any of these circumstances. Nope. <laughs> I'm afraid not, but I like the answer. That scores you 100 <laughs> points, takes your total up to 200. Yeah, perfectly good guess. Yeah, Graham Norton, great chat show host. They call him the male Catherine Anderson, don't they? They do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I think it's worthy. Yeah, See, yeah, I think absolutely. It's good, you can see good. the comparisons. Yes, yes thank you. Um, wonderful. Eddie, welcome back. Uh, remind us all about yourself, Eddie. Uh, I'm an engineering manager for a large aerospace company, so I run several engineering teams. Um, in my spare time, we've recently taken over an allotment, so I've been growing a lot of our own vegetables. Oh, you, sorry, in a personal capacity. I thought for the enormous aerospace giant <laughs> had taken on an allotment. And I was thinking, well, that, wow, marrows. I can't wait to see their marrows. <laughs> That's going to be incredible. They're very big marrows, but we're currently in, involved in a pumpkin off with some of our neighbours. So you get the biggest one by the end of next wow. week. Um, Eddie, you're on two, which means you're through to the next round. Doesn't matter what you score. So let's go. Uh, Nicholas Parsons. Nicholas Parsons says, Eddie, let's see how many of our 100 people said Nicholas Parsons. Let's see if it's right. No red line views, you're already through. Nicholas Parsons is right. Down that goes to 35. Not bad at all. 37 is your total. Yeah, once got over 20 million viewers, say, of the century. He was the first host of it, of course, Nicholas Parsons. There we go. Anyway, thank you. Now, Theo. Hello. Good afternoon to you. Uh, tell us all about yourself, Theo. Uh, so, I'm 23 and I'm a freelance personal trainer currently. And I'm also a musician in a band. So, it sort of split my time between the two. Tell us all about the personal training. How many clients do you currently have? Uh, seven or eight solid ones at the moment. Trying to work on a few. Solid, trying... that's good. Solid clients, <laughs> yes. that's what you want. Um, do you train in their houses or do you, do you train at a gym? Yeah, so I do sort of home visits or park workouts, that kind of thing. Okay. I try and train mostly body weight training. Okay. So minimal equipment, sort of just me. Well, that's and... nice for you. Yeah, you don't exactly. have to turn up with lots Doesn't of kettlebells. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes I do. But uh, Anyway, Theo. You're on 25, you're through to the next round. Yeah. Doesn't matter what you score here. What are you going to go for? Uh, I'm going to play it pretty safe. Don't have a crazy answer to try and get a point. I'm going to go for Stephen Mulhern. Stephen Mulhern, let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Stephen Mulhern, no red line, you're already through. Look at that, it's a good answer. 17 takes your total up to 42. Yeah, current host of Catchphrase, of course, Stephen Mohan. He's a lovely fella. Mm. Um, shall we go through all the different answers? Uh, we'll start with the Golden Shot, because there are two pointless answers with the Golden Shot, uh, and they are Jackie Ray and Charlie Williams. Very well done if you said that. Uh, Norman Vaughan was a very good answer, and then Bob Monkhouse would have scored you 42. Say of the century, there's a pointless answer. That is Peter Marshall. Um, and then apart from Nicholas Parsons, Keith Chegwin did a series of it as well on Challenge TV. He would have scored you two points. Uh, Mastermind, we've had John Humphreys already, and of course Magnus Magnusson would have scored you 41, but there was a series on Discovery TV as well, hosted by Clive Anderson, and he would have scored you two points. Now, catchphrase, there's a couple of low scorers here, uh, and they are Mark Curry, who was a pointless answer, very well done if you said Mark Curry, and Nick Weir would have scored you two points, well done if you said Nick Weir. He's the one who broke his leg on the show, falling down the stairs. Mm. Stephen Mulhern scored 17. Now, you said Roy Castle, uh, it's good, but it's not right. It's Roy Walker you were thinking of. Roy Walker. Uh, we'll just call you 25. Now, Blockbusters, we've had Bob Holness, but there's been four other series of that. Mm. One was hosted by Michael Aspel. He just scored you one point. Uh, Simon Mayo hosted Blockbusters for two points. Lisa Tarbuck did it as well, two points. Uh, and Dara O'Brien. And Dara would have scored you nine points. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are at the end of our first round, which means we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs, and I'm afraid Uzi and Zucci, you are that pair. For now, though, you'll be back. <laughs> it's fine. So um, we will see you next time when I have no doubt you will go all the way through to the final. But meanwhile, thank you very much indeed, Uzi and Zucci. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two.
Well done, everybody. You did phenomenally well there. Reg and Eddie, you were our low scorer, so congratulations to you. But best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is art. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... European museums and their countries. Richard. Yeah, on each board, we're going to show you the names of six museums or galleries. We'll also uh, give you the name of a work of art from that uh, gallery or museum. You just have to tell us what countries they're in, please. Thank you very much indeed. So, can you identify the country in which you would find these works of art in these galleries? Uh, here is our first board of six. Rijksmuseum, The Night Watch by Rembrandt van Rijn. Franz Kafka Museum, Imaginary Topography. Kunsthaus Zürich, The Gotthard Post by Rudolf Koller. Svalbard Museum, The Tundra. Louvre Museum, Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. And the Prado Museum, The Garden of Earthly Delights by Hieronymus Bosch. I'll read those again for you. Rijksmuseum, The Night Watch by Rembrandt van Rijn. Franz Kafka Museum, Imaginary Topography. Kunsthaus Zürich, The Gotthard Post by Rudolf Koller. Svalbard Museum, The Tundra. Louvre Museum, Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. And the Prado Museum, The Garden of Earthly Delights by Hieronymus Bosch. There we are. So, Henry. Hello. A couple jumping out at me. I think I'm going to again play it safe and go for Kunsthaus Zürich and say Switzerland. Surely. No. Uh, <laughs> yes. Shall we see if Switzerland's right? Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Switzerland. It's extraordinary. It's gone down to 32. 32. Mm. 68 people are really baffled by that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's essentially... That's the question is essentially, where is Zurich? Uh, 29 of our 100 said Germany for that. Thank you, Richard. Uh, now then, Reg. Mm, OK. The only one I'm sure about is the Louvre, which is going to be France. OK, Louvre, France, says Reg. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for France. Oh. That's slightly more compelling. 89. Had 10.2 million visitors in uh, 2018, the Louvre. It's too many. Uh, well, yeah, it is. It's, it's a lot of many. people. It's, it's not... Too many. It's not... If, it's too many if you're there. It is. But yeah, if you're, you're not there. there, then it's the more the merrier, because it makes oh, everywhere else true. less busy. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the wedding at Cana is the picture opposite the Mona Lisa. Um, but it is famously the least looked at picture <laughs> in, the, in the world. Who's that by? Veronese. Oh, I yeah. love a Veronese. Oh, so do I. Yeah. Mm. Oh, oh. That's delicious. Let's have a pizza after the show. Oh, oh, let's. Let's. Yeah. Thank you very much. OK, now then. Rachel, you're the last person to have this board. Do you want to talk us through it? Fill in all the blanks. I'll try. Can't guarantee that any of them are right, but top one, I would guess, Netherlands. Uh, second down, perhaps Germany. And Svalbard, I think, is Norway, which is what I'm going to go for. You're going to go for Norway for the Svalbard yeah. Museum. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Norway. Norway is absolutely right. 89 is the high score, which you passed. 32 is the low score, which you passed. 19. Very well played on that far podium. Yeah, very well played. It's on Nerds, Um It's a terrific answer. You were quite right about the Netherlands as well for the Rijksmuseum. But have scored you 46. Um, the Franz Kafka Museum? It's where Kafka's from. Czechia. Czechia, yeah. Czechia. That would have scored you six points. The best answer out there in the Prado? Uh, is Madrid. Yeah, Spain. so it's Spain. Absolutely. Would have scored you 11. Um, well, before we come back down the line, uh, very well done, Rachel, looking very good with that score. Uh, Reg and Eddie, it's looking a bit touch and go there, but Eddie, you've pulled it back before. Let's see if you can this time. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step back to the podium? OK, we're now going to put six more galleries and artworks up on the board. And remember, we're looking for the countries in which you would find these galleries. Hermitage Museum, The Peacock Clock by James Cox. Vasa Museum, the Vasa Warship. Uffizi Gallery, the Birth of Venus by Sandra Botticelli. Belvedere Museum, the Kiss by Gustav Klimt. Acropolis Museum, the Parthenon Frieze. And Chester Beatty, Adam and Eve by Albrecht Dürer. And here they are one more time. Hermitage Museum, the Peacock Clock by James Cox. 
Wasser Museum, the Wasser Warship. Uffizi Gallery, The Birth of Venus by Sandra Botticelli. Belvedere Museum, The Kiss by Gustav Klimt. Acropolis Museum, The Parthenon Frieze. And Chester Beatty, Adam and Eve by Albrecht Dürer. There we are. So, Paddy, we come to you. You've been set up incredibly well by Rachel there. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a couple I know. I think I am going to say... The Uffizi Gallery is in Italy. OK, the Uffizi Gallery is in Italy, says Paddy. There's your red line. Let's see if Italy can get you below that red line. That's right. And you're through. Very well done. Just 64, taking your total up to 83. Yeah, it's in Florence. Did you do one of your documentaries in Florence? I did, did in you? the Uffizi Gallery. Oh, you've been in, in the Uffizi? Yeah. Oh, you've been there? Yeah, done the Vasari Corridor. Ah, oh, it's lovely. What's in the Vasari Corridor? Oh, fire, plenty. fire extinguisher. A couple of fire extinguishers, yeah. yeah. It was basically so that uh, it was so that the Medicis could come across from the other side of uh, the river, the Arno. Under the, the river? Indoors, yeah. Over the river, over the, uh, the famous Ponte whatnot, you know. Vecchio, oh, that is Ponte famous. Vecchio. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I really must watch that documentary again. You have... Yeah, uh, haven't I made it? You have such authority. authority. Oh, I do. I bring it to life. That's what they said. Brings it to life, Armstrong. As I walk across the, I walk across the Ponte whatnot. The Ponte, oh, <laughs> Ponte, yeah, Ponte Vecchio. There we go. There you yeah. go. Um, now then, uh, we have got to you, Eddie. On eighty-nine, we need a low score. Yeah, there's one that I know that won't help. So, stab in the dark at the Vasa Museum, which I'm going to say, Sweden. Vasa Museum, Sweden. Let's see if that's right. How many of our 100 people said Sweden? There's no red line view. You're the high scorers. It is Sweden. Very well done indeed, Eddie. And it's a low score. Look at that, down to nine. Very well done indeed. Taking up total up to 98. That's terrific work, Eddie. Very well played. Yeah, the Vasa was a, a warship that sank in 1628. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And now, Theo. You're on 32. You have to score 65 or less. What are you going to go for? Okay, well, there's only one up there that I think I know. So I'm going to go for the Acropolis Museum and say Greece. Greece, says Theo. OK, here is your red line. Can you get below that with Greece? It's right. Ooh, 66. Right. That takes your total up to 98. This is very exciting. We haven't had a lockdown scenario for quite some time. haven't had a lockdown for ages. And this is wow. like an artistic lockdown. It's an art <laughs> lockdown. That's very classy of us. It really is. That means like, the security grills go down and the alarms stop yeah, going off. Yeah, they have. They're going off right now. We are in a tie-break lockdown scenario. So what happens here to break our way through the deadlock is uh, Theo and Henry, because you're nearer the column, you are going to go first, and you can now confer before giving your answer. Uh, there's two which, yeah, we're going to go Chester Beatty and say England. Chester Beatty. England. OK. Eddie and Reg. Gustav Klimt, Austria. Gustav Klimt, Austria. So, let's go in the first instance for Chester Beatty and see if England is right. Chester Beatty. An incorrect answer scores you 100 points. Now then, Eddie and Reg have gone for Austria for the Belvedere. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Austria. It's right. Well, there we are. It goes down to 13, but you are through. Very well done indeed. That takes your total up to 111. That's the way to break a deadlock. Very well played, gents. Uh, it is Austria. Um, Chester Beatty, not in England, not in the UK. Yeah, Chester Beatty. It's in um, Dublin, so it's in Ireland. Would have scored two points as well. It's the best answer on the board. And the Hermitage? It's in Russia. It is. It's in St Petersburg yeah. in Russia. And that would have scored you 13 points. It's fun to say the Peacock Clock by James Cox. Isn't it? You've got to be careful, but be it's fun careful. to say. Always be. Uh, wow. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're at the end of our second round, which means we have to say goodbye to another pair, Theo and Henry. I'm afraid that pair is you. We'll see you again next time. And I have no doubt you'll do fantastically. But in the meantime, thank you very much, Theo yeah, yeah. and Henry. Yeah. But for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. Yeah. 
Congratulations, Reg and Eddie, Rachel and Paddy. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £5,500. <laughs> but we thought it might be fun, just before we play the head to see if we can't swell that jackpot a bit, see if we can just get a couple of pointless answers and throw 500 extra quid into that jackpot. Wouldn't that be fun? What do you say? Should we do it? Yes, yes please. Good. OK, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many villains in Bond films as they could. Richard. Yeah, then there's six possible Bond villains up here. Two of them are so obscure, they're pointless answers. Two of them we've made up entirely, so they are incorrect. See if you can get both the pointless answers at home and see if you can add some money to the jackpot in the studio. This is fun. OK, here are six potential Bond villains. And we've got... Karl Stromberg, Baron Bomburst, General Orloff, Blairu, Electra King, and Rosa Klebb. We need to find the pointless answers. You can chat out loud. Do your talking out loud, Reg and Eddie, um, so we can all benefit from your thinking. Stromberg, Underwater City. Yep. Um, Rosa Klebb on. is too obvious. That's um, not pointless. General Orloff, he was in the Sean Bean one. Yep. Electric King sounds stupid. <laughs> so, I'd... yeah, I think so. Yeah, so we think we're going to go General Orlov. General Orlov. OK, let's find out if General Orlov is, is real. Let's find out if it's pointless. It's right. This is a crucial first step towards it being pointless. And it's pointless. Very well done, here, General Orlov. Fantastic work there, Reginetti. We've found £250. There's another £250 hiding on that board. Rachel and Paddy, can you find it? Um, Carl Stromberg? Shall, well, shall we go for the one that we think is definitely a villain? Yeah, OK. Electra King and just see how we go. Go for it. We'll go with Electra King. Electra King. OK, Electra King. Let's find out. Is it pointless? Electra King is right. Can we make it 500 from 500? Yes, we can. Very well done indeed. Two pointless answers. Fantastic work. <laughs> Beautifully done. Very, very rare we get a double pointless and add 500 pounds to the jackpot, so congratulations. Yeah, um, played by Stephen Burkoff. Uh, he's General Olof, uh, and Electric King is Sophie Marceau. Now, the incorrect answers were Blero. That's an incorrect answer. And Baron Bomburst. Now, Baron Bomburst is a villain from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, which is not only written by Ian Fleming, but Kurt Frober, who played him in the film, uh, previously played Goldfinger. But uh, an incorrect answer here. And the other two uh, would have scored you points. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, so, well done. You managed to find two pointless answers, which means we're adding £500 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £6,000. Ah, very satisfying. Very well done. But who's playing for it? Let's find out in the head-to-head. As ever, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Here is your first question, and it concerns... Diacritics. 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 Uh, diacritics, yeah, they're simply uh, the, uh, the little symbols you have above or below letters that change the sound of them, like accents, essentially. I'm going to show you five of them now on the board. We're going to show you the first and last letters of their name, but what are they called, please? Thank you very much indeed. What are the names of these diacritics? And we have got... A. U T <laughs> B H K C C X D T E and E A E. There we are, five diacritics, and Reg and Eddie, you're our golden couple, so you will go first. OK. We know one, definitely. You said you knew this one. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, we'll try E, aret. Aret. OK, aret for E, say so Reg and Eddie, Rachel and Paddy. Do you want to talk us through that ball? <laughs> It was a horror horror show when it started for me, <laughs> but I think... So, I think A is umlaut. Uh, hopefully pronounced correctly. Uh, e, uh, e, we think, was something different. And, that, and that's it. That's uh, it. We're going to go for umlaut to A. 
umlaut. So, Reg and Eddie have gone for aret. For e, aret. Let's see, aret. Is that right? No. I'm afraid. No. Uh, meanwhile, Rachel and Paddy have said umlaut or umlaut for A. Let's see if that is right. How many of our 100 people said umlaut? It is right. That goes down to 42. And it means, Rachel and Paddy, after one question, you are up 1-0. Uh, yeah, we'll leave B for the moment. C is... Is circumflex. Circumflex, yep. We'll just score G25. Uh, D? Is tilde. Yep, it is tilde. And that would have scored you 11. The best answer on the board, uh, often used in Eastern European uh, languages, is a heart check. Like a little, little thing. A little crown there. Yeah, like a little crown. Heart check would have scored you one point. Very well done if you said that at home. And E, uh, not Narette, it's easier than that. Acute. Acute. Yeah. And that would have scored you 33. Acute is that way, grave is the other way, isn't it? Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, here comes your second question. Now then, Reg and Eddie, you have to win this one to stay in the game. So good luck, because Rachel and Paddy get to answer it first. Our second question is all about... Neville Chamberlain, Richard. Yeah, at last. I know that you've all revised <laughs> Neville Chamberlain. Uh, five questions now all about Neville Chamberlain. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the five clues. Here they are. Political party he represented, the year he became prime minister, Midland City in which he was born, man whom he succeeded as prime minister, and the German leader with whom he signed the Munich Agreement in 1938. There we are. Rachel and Paddy will go first. Yeah, don't have much for this. Um, so we're just going to say um, German leader was Adolf Hitler. OK, Adolf Hitler, the Munich Agreement German leader, Adolf Hitler. Now, Reg and Eddie. Can you talk us through the rest of that board? Uh, talk through a year where he was Prime Minister, obviously, 38, so maybe about 36. Midland City could plump one. And he succeeded as Prime Minister... I think he succeeded Asquith. But I wouldn't no, like he to was no. First World War. Prime Minister. No. I think we'll go for the political party and Conservative. It was a Conservative. OK, so we have Adolf Hitler and we have... Conservative. Rachel and Paddy have gone for Adolf Hitler. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. It's right. That goes down to 56. <laughs> Reg and Eddie, meanwhile, have said that he was a Conservative. Let's see if that is right for Neville Chamberlain. It is right. And it wins you the point, but not by a great deal. But 44, well done. You're back in the game, just what we needed. After two questions, it's one all. Well played, gents. Um, the Midland City, uh, if you had Birmingham. to guess, Birmingham, yeah. Would have scored you 32. I know you're trying to work out who he succeeded as Prime Minister. It was Stanley Baldwin. Um, Baldwin would have scored you seven, and the year that he did succeed him was 1937. And that would have scored 10. So Baldwin, the best answer up there. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, now, here comes the decider. Whoever wins this third question goes through to the right. final to play for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question today is all about... ..fiction writers. Richard. Yep, simply going to show you the name of five fiction writers now with alternate letters removed. We're also going to show you the year in which they were born. But who are they, please? Thank you very much indeed. Who are these five fiction writers? Here they come. We have got T-O-A-H-R-Y, 1840. A-T-O-Y-R-L-O-E, 1815. B-R-A-A-A-T-A-D-1901-V-R-I-I-W-O-F-1882 and G-O-G-O-W-L-1903. There we are, five fiction writers. Reg and Eddie will go first. Second. Yeah, you call it. Yeah. OK. Go. Yeah. Uh, second one down, Anthony Trollope. OK, Anthony Trollope, say Reg and Eddie. Now, Rachel and Paddy, over to you. Can you fill in that board for us? We know the last two are Virginia Woolf and George Orwell. The third one, Barbara somebody, but I can't for the life of me think of the surname. So I think we're going to go for the fourth one down and say Virginia Woolf. OK, you're going to say Virginia Woolf. So we have Anthony Trollope and we have Virginia Woolf. Uh, Reg and Eddie went for Anthony Trollope. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. Uh, 
Very well done. 23 for Anthony Trollope. Meanwhile, Rachel and Paddy have gone for Virginia Woolf. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf is right. Ooh, 74 for Virginia Woolf, which means very well done indeed. Reg and Eddie, after three questions, you're through to the final 2-1. Yeah, only one answer there that would have beaten Anthony Trollope. Um, the top answer wouldn't have beaten it, the top answer Thomas is Hardy. Thomas Hardy. He would have scored you 27. You're quite right about George Orwell down the bottom there. He would have scored you 40. Uh, the best answer, born in 1901. Do you know, I've just got it now. I've been thinking uh, Barbara Maitland, Barbara... No, Barbara Cartland. Barbara Cartland, course. yeah. And she would have scored seven points. Very well done if you said that at home. Thank you very much indeed. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Rachel and Paddy, it's you twice now you've made it to the head-to-head. -head. That's good. I'm sorry, though, you don't get to leave with a trophy to no. show you how, far, how well you did. Uh, but it's been great having you on both shows. Thank you so and much, Rachel and Paddy. But for Reg and it is now time for our pointless final. Very well done, Reg and Eddie. You've seen off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot and at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £6,000. There it is. Well, you've done really well, really, really well, and great to see you in this final and your second appearance on the show. What do you want to see come up in this last round? Music would be nice, uh, TV stuff, I guess. Tracks off the London Call-In album. <laughs> yeah. yeah, music, music. OK, well, let's see what we get on the board today. There'll be four things, as ever. Here they come. Men's international football scorers in 2019, the US Vice President, Johann Sebastian Bach, and the jungle in popular culture. What do you think? Let's rule out the football. Yeah, no football. Uh, US... Mm. What do you it, think? We could jungle get... Book, it, songs from jungle Book, Songs from the Jungle, popular culture I know a bit about. Otherwise, it's vice presidents and... Let's go the jungle, then. Yep, jungle, jungle, the popular, jungle popular culture. Popular. OK, the jungle in popular culture. OK, three very different questions here. We're looking for any of the following, please. We're looking for anyone credited by IMDb as appearing in Carry On Up the Jungle. We are looking for any named character, animal or human, that appears in the Mowgli stories in Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book or The Second Jungle Book. Or we are looking for any act who have had a single or album in the UK Top 40 with the word jungle in the title, please, up to July 2019. So cast of Up the Jungle, named characters in The Jungle Books uh, and those artists with Top 40 singles or albums with jungle in the title. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? There's yes. the 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, uh, singles and albums. Bow Wow Wow had an album with jungle in it. Go wild in the jungle. Go wild in the jungle. Yeah. Come up jungle. No, it was wild in the country, but the angle, the album had. Oh, that was okay. Okay. Could not name the titles. Uh, yeah. Go wild in. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Sure. Come sure up jungle. Terry mm. Scott. Terry Scott. Yeah, okay. Was a Tarzan character. Joan Sims was definitely in it. Joan Sims. Yeah. Okay. Um, name characters. Arcade lives in it. Yeah. What were the name of the three? Um, uh. Oh. Oh, I reckon Bow Wow Wow. I think they had a really long album title. With oh, it's just the artist, you don't need the name yet. Okay, no. that's fine. Yeah, Bow Wow Sure, Bow Wow Wow. Bow Wow Wow. Terry Scott. And who else was in it? Ten Charles Hawtrey. Was in Carrie Charles Hawtrey. Yeah. Other Jungle songs or albums? What about Jungle Rock? You did it. Hank Mazel, Jungle Rock. Brilliant, we'll do right. that. Yeah. yeah, I think we could. Okay, there's your minute up. Sounds like you've got your answers. What are you going to give yeah. me? Hank Mazel. Hank Mazel. Jungle Rock. OK. Uh, Terry Scott from the cast of the film. Terry Scott. Bow Wow Wow. And Bow Wow Wow. Yeah. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Hank Mazel. Hank Mazel goes last. Yeah, Least yeah. likely to be pointless? Bow Wow Wow. Bow Wow Bow Wow. Bow Wow Wow. Terry Scott mm -hmm. goes in the middle. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order then, and here they are. We have got Bow Wow Wow, Terry Scott, Hank Mazel. Three good answers there. Wouldn't it be lovely if one of those was pointless and won you that jackpot of 6,000 quid? What would you like to do with it if you won? Reg, you first. Well, I'm getting married next year, so I'll probably buy a new guitar. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, it's going to go on a big party, so, yeah. Fantastic. Very good indeed. OK, um, Eddie, how about you? Well, as his band's off touring Australia and New Zealand next year, I might go along and do some roadieing. 
Alternatively, it's my wife's birthday today, so it might all go there. Oh, I have to make up for not being there. <laughs> exactly. Well, listen, very, very best of luck. Wouldn't it be lovely if one of these answers won you that jackpot? Uh, your first answer was Bow Wow Wow. In this case, we were looking for any artist who had a single or album in the UK Top 40 with the word jungle in their title, Bow Wow Wow, which you got quite early on. Wouldn't it be great if this was right and pointless? For £6,000. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. If it's pointless, 6,000 quid could be yours. It's right. OK, bow, wow, wow. Just has to go all the way down to zero now. And that jackpot is yours. Down we go through the teens. We're at a single figure. Still going down, still going down. We have done it. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> bow, wow, wow was a pointless answer, so huge congratulations. You're taking home our jackpot of 6,000 quid. Very well, well played, gents. That's a nice one to remember, isn't it? It's a great album as well. It's yeah. uh, Annabella Lewin, wasn't it? It was called, I'm not surprised you can't remember the title, but Sea Jungle, Sea Jungle, Go Join Your Gang, Yeah, City All Over, Go Ape Crazy That's was well. the title of that album. Just as well as the artist's name. <laughs> yeah, is it, isn't it just? Imagine if you got one of those words wrong. Uh, congratulations. If we'd had to carry on, Terry Scott would have scored you seven points. Uh, Hank Mizell would have scored you two points. So, oh. pra praise be to Bow Wow Wow. Oh. Um, let's take a look at the cast of Carry On Up the Jungle first, shall we? Three pointless answers here. You could have said Reuben Martin, Valerie Moore, and Yemi Goodman, Ajibade. All of those are pointless answers. Sid Jane's the biggest scorer there. Uh, Joan Sims, you mentioned as well, she'd have scored you 17. Moving on to named characters in the Jungle Books, you could have Grey Brother, Jakala. Ko and Mesua, all of those are pointless answers. Uh, Balu, Shere Khan, Bagheera were the biggest scorers there. And those artists, Adamski, The Space Jungle, people might have got the Fuji's Rumble in the Jungle as a pointless answer. The Shadows, Life in the Jungle, Emma Louise as well, also could have had French Montana. Uh, the Jungle Boys and the Jungle Brothers were pointless answers, unsurprisingly. Very well done if you've got any of those at home. And congratulations, lovely to see Bow Wow Wow winning you £6,000. Thank you very much indeed, Rich, and thanks once again to Reg and Eddie, our winning players who take away today's jackpot of £6,000. Very well done. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.